Greetings. Reese here from Leather and Art by Memory Trees with a new video. This time, we're going to be taking this old knife case and making a new one for this beautiful knife. Let's check it out. This is the new case right here. And this is a simple way to make a knife case with no pattern. I'll show you how it's done. As you can see, we got a belt loop and a snap closure. This thing should last a long time. Now, I did make it a little big. That's what the customer wanted because they're gonna be upgrading their knife to the bigger version. And so they needed a little leeway, but this idea still works. So first off, we're gonna cut off some leather pieces and I wanted them bigger than the case. So I had the old case, which helps with uh, determining the sizes of pieces that you need. But generally, if you just measure the knife and um, depending on the case design, this one has a flap going over the top. So in this case, we want one long piece and one shorter piece. But basically you just need one piece that can um, fit over the knife very comfortably and it needs to be longer because you're going to cut off excess and then the longer piece that folds over it should be like one and a half times as long and as for the width um, you can kind of like push the leather around the knife and along the fold you should give it extra so in this case i got a three inch wide piece um, we also have this piece here which is for the belt loop and here it is after I stamped it and we're just going to clean off those corners a bit round it off I, I used a round end punch belt punch to get that corner nice and round to begin with and then I'm just cleaning it up with the knife here and then I'm also going to sand it so that it gets really round because I cut in facets on the corners like that so then the sanding just removes those facets nice and clean makes it all smooth as you can see in this video we got sound not for the whole thing but for a lot of it nice feature I'm working on things you know trying to make things a bit better all right so we're edging the belt loop and you got to remember that most belts are one and a half inch wide so this piece here is like three inches almost long and then uh, it's going to be stitched on and it's going to be like reinforced stitched so it needs to be a little extra long so you got space for the belt to go underneath uh, where, where it sits on the back of the knife case and that's the point of failure on the previous knife case so you know we're going to make it good and strong so now we're burnishing this little piece here and it's a bit messy on the back but you're never going to see that once it's attached. <clears throat> Wood slicker. Oh, and I use the Tokonoru from Japan. <laughs> All right. One of the best parts. Leather bomb with Adam Wax. Let's go. I spilled some on the table. Um, my bad. Don't worry. I clean that up right now. See? <laughs> okay, so we're trying to get a nice even coat here. And that wasn't the evenest, but it's all right. It's like a double layer. And don't worry about it too much. It'll end up looking great. Leather bomb is pretty forgiving. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I like it. Uh, so we're just bombing each piece, waxing it up. Um, now, if you're gonna wet form your knife case, you might want to consider putting the wax after, because when you wet it and stuff, the wax kind of flows around without your permission, and it can make things a bit weird. It can go on the threads, and it can become blotchy, and it'll definitely change the color. Uh, but I'm not going to be wet forming this case. I'm just keeping it simple and we're going to just basically dry form it 
if you will. You'll see what I mean. So we got the knife here. This is the pocket piece. So the front where the knife slips under. And this is the piece of leather that's gonna bend around the knife. Uh, you can also see the knife there, it's kind of nice. It's got a corkscrew. So I cut a little divot in the corner top there, the pocket top. And that's for easier finger access of the knife. Um, it also helps center the knife because the knife has a little piece that pokes out or something. Um, so now we're gonna burnish that, of course. Always burnish and edge your pocket tops. Anything that the customer touches, you wanna burnish. That's, uh, that's luxury right there. All right, so I'm also stamping the initials of this fella. And uh, I got these craft tool stamps where you just hammer them. Uh, it helps to go and kind of like move around, you see that? move around the little hammer stick while you're hammering so that you get all of the stamp nice and in there. It also helps to wet the leather, but you know, you don't need to do that. I mean, these look perfectly good, right? And I didn't, I didn't wet it. Okay, so this is gonna have the snap closure. So punch in a little hole there with the rotary punch and then we're popping in our nobule part. That's what I'm gonna call that. There's probably a real name for these parts, but you know, just, they don't, they don't say it on the label. Okay, so this thing, you need a little anvil, and uh, the anvil goes into the back, there's like a hole. And then this top part, the setter part, it fits nicely around the nobule, and then corresponding with the anvil, smashes it into place. And you wanna make sure it can't rotate once it's in there. If it can rotate, then for some reason, they just really don't snap very well. Um, so no rotation on that piece. The other piece, the one that clips on that, it can rotate a bit, but you also just don't really want that either. Okay, so marking where the pocket's going, I'm folding the leather over the knife. Helps to have the knife as well, but you don't need the knife, but it's a lot easier. And so we're just gonna mark where that goes, and I marked the width, so it's actually a little 90 degree L. Now I'm also marking where this uh, belt loop should go, kind of centering it with the knife. Um, and then we'll mark where that is going on the, on the back with the awl. And then I'm gonna take this knife here, the, the skiver, and I'm gonna scratch. This is to help the glue. And you don't need to go through the middle, just the edges where the glue is actually going, because the middle is where the belt goes. You don't need to glue that. Um, wow, a lot of glue coming out today. <laughs> and yeah, I use barge, putting some barge on the edges of that to correspond with the little scratch marks that we made. And, um, one thing that's good to know is when the glue's wet like this, you can easily just rub it out of where it shouldn't be. So you can clean it up a little bit and it'll come right off your hand, just like rubbing your hands and it'll come off. Okay, so glue's dried, takes like five to 10 minutes. Then you can put it on and you only get one shot. So make sure it's straight. And there's extra glue around the edges. So with your finger, you can Kind of do what I'm doing there, you just rub it and the glue will come off. It's like when you're cleaning, uh, well, I don't want to say it, but a booger. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, uh, it's gonna get stitched. Um, and I'm just marking where the holes will go. And that ruler that I'm using, that straight edge, it's an inch and a half wide, so that plus a bit of extra width will be enough. And then with my two prong, I'm gonna go around the corner and mark where those should go. You don't, you don't wanna hammer first, mark first, cause then it won't look weird with the stitches. You can get your gaps nice. Uh, it's kind of like just checking first. Also, 
if you start on one side, like, um, I don't know if I can show you now, but like I did the, the horizontal line and then there's the curve. From one side of the horizontal, you do one, and then on the other side you do one, and you go one and one on each side. That can help keep things centered. But you don't need to do that. You just need to make sure it looks good in the end. So there's all our holes punched. Little half moons. And that should be really strong. I mean, there's like, there's a lot of stitch contact. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm gonna saddle stitch that. And I'm gonna make sure the back stitch is on the, the straight part, not the curved part. Um, mostly because it looks better. But you can have it your way. <clears throat> Love the way that shines with that wax on there. side done snip and light that the ends and flatten with a hammer and then we're gonna do the other stitch and there it is done and just making sure that there's no glue holding that thing down Okay, so now on the long part, I'm gonna sketch kind of where the knife goes, its actual general shape. And this is because we're gonna now glue the top part to the long part. And I'm kind of eyeballing where this goes. Uh, this is kind of like where the glue should go outside of, it's like a border. And um, yeah, once again, a lot of glue came out there. I guess I must have squeezed the bottle before opening. Oops. No big deal. Um, so yeah, keeping it outside that line because we don't want to glue the knife or anything. <laughs> Probably wouldn't cause a problem, but there's no point in putting glue there anyway. Same on this part. Keeping outside the line. And I actually should have come up a little bit closer to the bottom of the knife, but... Uh, as long as the sides are good, then we can get the stitch line in. So I'm actually going to glue it with the knife in place, because then it'll make sure that I can get a nice tight fit. So I'm really going to squeeze it down around the knife. And this is what I meant by, like, dry forming. I don't think that that's a real term, but it it's kind of like the same result, sort of as wet forming, just like a little looser. But it fits real nice, especially if you, you know, push hard. So with my stitch line marker, I'm going to get like an even width on each side. And also it'll help me keep a straight line going down while I stitch. Except uh, on my stitch here, you'll see I go down here and then I come in with a two prong and I look at where the knife goes and I'm like, hmm. That stitch needs to come in a bit tighter. So I actually just re-mark closer around the bottom curve here. <clears throat> and make sure the, the leather goes flat when I press these, just so that I know it's gonna end up nice. So I'm going around the curve. The knife has like a little scimitar type point going out to the, like towards the bottom of the screen and then it comes back in on the blade side. And this worked out perfectly where I was gonna have exactly enough space for it to go over. Uh, you know, like where you do the over stitch over the pocket corner. So now we're gonna hammer these down. And uh, also when you do this part, 
before you hammer and stuff, make sure that you're not going to go through the belt loop or something because then it won't look good. And it might break later too. So we're just hammering down the stitch marks. Sped up. It's, it's not that exciting. Pretty good building at Casco. Yeah, yours is good too. Uh, I use five millimeter stitch forks. Yeah, so there we go. All stitch poked, forked. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of the basic shape. So here I'm just doubling up the stitch on this first. Uh, on both sides I'm going to do this, but over the, the pocket top I do a double over for extra reinforcement because it's a high pressure area. Um, and especially on a knife case because you could potentially knife your threads. So if there's two threads, it's better than one. Uh, fast forward to the other side where I'm finishing off. And I also took too much thread because I must have lost count while I was counting how many times thread I have. <laughs> yeah, that's fine though. So finishing off here with uh, doubling over the pocket top on the other side and I caught the, the old knife case there. Lol. <clears throat> and just making sure not to go through your own threads. Don't go through your own threads, it looks bad. You gotta do everything you can to dodge them. Okay. So I'm gonna finish on the front. And with this particular thing, it's not gonna make a big deal, a difference whether it's on the front or the back because we can burn very close to the edge and therefore there's not gonna be much things that I could burn when I burn the, uh, melt down the threads. I use eBay thread, by the way, not Ritz a Tiger. It's close, but it's not quite. It's kind of like the Rhino thread from Springfield Leather. Um, they're really good. You know, I used the Ritza before and it's really expensive. So unless you're charging a lot for your stuff, I don't recommend using it. Um, because it really doesn't make that much of a difference to a customer unless they themselves are interested in that thread. And there have been people who have been like, can you use the Ritza thread? And it's like, yeah, sure. Uh, but most people, you know, it's kind of like the classic thing where an artist will be very critical of their work and what they're using. And then people who look at the art are just like, wow, look at the colors, you know what I mean? Um, so don't fret too hard about your thread. They're all kind of the same. They're all good. Some of them are better than others though. <laughs> Some of them are not very nice. This one's pretty nice, but it's not very expensive. It's called Galaces. I just looked at it. Galaces thread. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're back on the spring snap for the top flap. And I basically have like what I would call like a blank template or a blank of the top flap. So I'm putting the snap in where it needs to be. Um, the fold of this needs to be about an inch above the knife because like I said, the guy's going to get a, a longer, bigger version of the knife. So it needs extra space above where the old knife was. So now I'm just going to freehand rough in a flap shape just something simple and because uh, of the leather folding there I kind of cut that a bit wide so I'm going to come back in over there and then I'm going to meet the line from the bottom and that should work pretty well that's what I meant to do <laughs> okay so now we got a nice narrower flap and I'm going to chop off the top here um, it's a bit long 
And then with the sander, it should end up nice, you know, after smoothing out the corners and everything. I used the Dremel there, and I wasn't able to film all that, so it's just gonna cut. But here's basically the done case. Um, but after sanding, you got a big burr on the sides of the leather, so you gotta edge it. And then we're gonna burnish it, and then it's gonna be done. So we're going all around here with the edger number two size, SLC. Good edger. You need a good edger. That's something that you can't skimp on. I was using a cheap edger before, one of the Chinese ones, I don't know. It's got like multiple sizes and it just really was bad. And then I got this one and I was like, okay, now this is nice. This one was like $36. Uh, they don't really, you should probably go cheaper than that, to be honest. <laughs> it's kind of like in uh, woodworking when you're going to buy a plane. If you're going to get a wood plane, yeah, you don't get a cheap one, okay? Otherwise, it's just not going to cut. So yeah, edging all around here, getting rid of that sanding burr. I did quite a bit of sanding, I think, because... Uh, some of the bottom of the knife case, because of the fold of the leather, it wasn't fitting too perfectly. So there's the finished shape, and the knife fits nice, pretty snug in there. It looks great, nice color. So now we're gonna go ahead and burnish the whole thing. And that's gonna be it. Uh, pretty simple way to make a knife case. It's kind of like making a little pocket. And I actually, put a reinforcement stitch down at the bottom. You'll see it in a second here. There it is. And it looks cool, it gives it some angle, and it's also reinforcing. Thanks.